Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. There's very little we take for granted here on The Advocate. However, you can take for granted the fact that we will continually position ourselves to the challenge of, to challenge the status quo in search of true change. Welcome to The Advocate. On this edition, Chuka is not mobilized by the fact that the University of Transportation has just been commissioned in Darat, where to Niger. Emeka is endorsing the recent position of Governor Song Wolu by asserting that maybe we will address our governors as your excellency when they start delivering excellent value. What's in a name, some might ask. Ekene, usually want to look at the bright side of things, wants to draw attention to the positive side of conflict and resolution. She has titled it, Kiss and Makeup. Uche wants to take, take a look at a certain recently trending social media story from a different angle. Her advocacy is titled, Hymen Gate. Does that give it away? I, on the other hand, will be spotlighting an educational revolution gone backwards. It's time to move things forward after the break. Unless we quantify a problem, we may not appreciate how badly the rot has set in. The Holy Book says, train up a child in the holy, holy way he or she should go, and when he or she is old, he will not depart from it. Our society has failed to hit this holy injunction. Nigeria is today producing more entertainers than engineers, we are producing more models than mathematicians, more footballers than farmers, more media personalities than medical doctors. For instance, while in China, 3.6 doctors per 1,000 persons, Argentina, 3.9, Germany, 4.2, France, 3.2, Brazil, 1.8, South Africa, 0.81, and India, 0.75, Nigeria is set to produce 0.37 doctors per thousand persons, meaning the possibility of one person out of 1,000 becoming a doctor is 0.03%. This is terrible for a nation of about 200 million people. Today, the doctor-patient ratio is one to 6,000. That is one doctor to 6,000 patients. You're alarmed, right? We all should be. The same statistics are noticeable across STEM that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So now the question is, has it always been this bad? The answer is absolutely no. So how did we get here and what went wrong? Is it because we as a society has failed to train up a whole generation of value, selflessness, and we have instead instilled a culture of quick wins, a glamorous living, and a pursuit of wealth by any means necessary? Or are we all and we are all guilty, actually all of us, from government haphazard approach to policy formulations and funding of education to unalloyed media fixation with nudity and promotion of every and anything immoral to lack of sponsorship and support from the corporate or private sector. As a people, we must record our priorities or reorder our priorities, get our acts right and put the needed investments in educating our children. We must also teach them to value hard work and selflessness above the bling of celebrity statuses and fame. I, you know what? Um, because I come from the media background, let me first of all defend <laughs> my, my industry. Then, uh, defend no, I have to defend. Um, I have to defend myself, actually. You can shoot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, um, I, I think generally speaking. Um, I don't think that, I think, I, I, I mean, I may have to contest the stats, um, okay. you know, to some level, because I think a lot more people have access to uh, education, but not a lot more people value 
education as much as it was valued before. So there's a thing about whether we value having an education with regards to whether there's more access for education. There's more access for, for schools and things like that than maybe in the 70s and 80s. I mean, more. There's 10,000 children out of school, though. Yeah, that, that, but because we don't access. value. Every five children. But because we don't value so even education. Though it's there, so even though it's the there, problem. so even though it's there, people don't see the fact that, you know, having an education really matters this day. So I'd rather just, you know. Um, and you have to ask what type of education is there. Anyway, yeah, so, but, 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 but it, I'm, I'm not, it's not the solution. It's just the way I see one aspect of it. Um, I think that um, we need to do a lot more. And I think part of the challenge for me has been you have a Ministry of Education that sees um, itself purely from the standpoint of let's have a bigger budget to build more schools but actually doesn't look at the soft side. What do we need to do to promote the value of education? Do we, should we go around telling people how more important it is to go to school using people who have done very well, for example, getting good education, your, your professor, your writers, your chimamandas, your, mm -hmm. your scientists, went from you know, rags who went riches. from rags to riches, depends <laughs> only because of education. Let, let me buttress but that. Let me buttress that. Um, yeah. Simply because, I mean, the last advocacy, Libros was pointing out that, um, because there was the case made by one of the advocates that now you have the same thing you're saying, you have mm -hmm. more entertainers than you have educated people mm -hmm. roaming around. But Libros made a point which stayed with me, which is that actually, that once upon a time, it wasn't popular to go into football, it wasn't popular. So it was sold to them. So just going on to what he's saying, it was packaged and presented in a way that was palatable. So maybe the system, I feel it still comes back to government, sorry to say. I don't like to say that, but I feel that systematically they've made education, watered it down, donned it down, so it has, doesn't have the value it should have. If it was made attractive, more people would see it as, oh, if I endure, if I sacrifice for so many years, doc being a doctor, seven years, you know, if I sacrifice for seven years, at the end of it, I will have, you know, access to a better standard of living. But you don't have that. Mm -hmm. so, so if you don't have that, people are thinking, okay, is either I go into politics because that's cash cow or I go into entertainment. So you're looking for how to get out from, because the upward mobility thing is not working. You can't stay mm -hmm. in poverty all your life. So the only other people who have <coughs> access to this rags to riches thing are the entertainers or the footballers. Yes, so absolutely. you don't really blame them. There has to be a reward. Well, I mean, look at doctors. What, what doctors are fleeing Nigeria because, well, the, you know. It's not working. Yeah, because they're not yeah. making, what, what I was trying to call our attention to is, you know, what we're placing emphasis on, particularly those sponsoring things. For instance, uh, the recent Big Brother event, mm -hmm. a, a station was dedicated to that event. Mm -hmm. So it was in your face. Mm -hmm. Imagine they were throwing STEM related things and giving reward like that. Then who will be interested? What happened to who wants to be a millionaire? I'm just saying that, I you know. I disagree with that. No, There's already a culture what, that it's, has it's an what, appetite for what, those what, things. Yeah. It's what I they, is what they feed you with that I, you'd, no, you'll I, take. I, 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 I think that they're sorry, feeding us and we're losing interest in this. You know, this is my challenge. Um, you know, uh, um, uh, the fact that we live in a society today where you have access to a multitude of information channels, okay? And I think, again, the responsibility of those of us in authority, in the government and, and leaders should be how do we promote, the, 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 you know, how look, there are channels that promote, that have a dedicated to 24-7 education, yeah. even, on, on, even on uh, National yeah. Geographic uh, and so on. I mean, things. so what, are, we, are we now saying and there's, there's even a new one, Curiosity System. There, there are even channels on different platforms, on Star Times, on DSTV, that are educational based 24-7. Yeah, but aren't we talking no, about no. formal channels of education, like mm. where you get certificates and, and things like that? I'm, I'm inclined mm. to agree with you, Ekene. You know, in terms of all this, how, why would anybody want to go into uh, Med medicine school. or engineering? You know, like my, my dad told me this story about when mm. his dad died very early, and he always wanted to be a doctor. But when he checked how many years he would have to invest and everything, and he knew he needed to start yeah. taking care of his siblings and what have you, he chose engineering over medicine. Mm -hmm. Now, look at it now. We all know, many of us, we can see lots of graduates out of business. Mm. People are going, driving, graduates are drivers, they're all manner of things, mm. driving keke, you name it. Mm. So why would you then want to invest in education, knowing fully well that when you come out, you're not going to get anything. So this just reminds me of, you know, how black America became, you know, like they weren't 
uh, using the education channel in the way that you know maybe the whites were over there. So <laughs> their only access to get rich quick and everything was through entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, sports, sports and everything. Mm -hmm. And we have learned that. This is a social media age. Everybody wants fame now. So nobody is going to be sitting there waiting to invest seven <laughs> years plus because that, in Nigeria, it's not just so, seven years. Social has to come gone. from government. Yeah, unfortunately, it has to come from they the government. They have to be strategic about it. You know, people are not going to suddenly think differently now, you know. You're still puzzling it. Chica. Yeah, yeah, it is very complicated because <laughs> clearly there's something wrong with our economy that might also be contributing to this. Mm -hmm. Why it is that the more formal educated people cannot and make valued, it, yeah. you know, at all, less valued, yeah. It must be the way they're It's where, where, we, oh, place yes. our, where so, we place our priorities. Mm -hmm. Yes. If, if we're focusing on nudity and you then know, that's putting where we'll premium, that's where people would move. Yeah. People so like I'm saying give to, priority to certain like things. To Encourage young people who are striving in science. Give them big money. But, but and then you I, find I interest two, in that I think the two can happen at the same time. time. No, but I, I, I yeah, but the thing is, the balance. No, no, yeah, yeah. We still have criminalize, make it look as if the mm, fact that there's nudity the is the reason why there's less education. Yeah. I don't think so. We're just calling, we're no, just calling attention to the airways. Maybe when it becomes Another more thing dominant. I want to drop here is that mm. if we look at our leaders, our leaders don't really give you much comfort in thinking that education, you, you know, hard. We're, what, what we're seeing <laughs> are not necessarily no, it's not. educated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. more technocrats people. and educated yeah. people. Yeah, and we've discovered that the power lies with thugs and all manner of things. Yeah. So tell me why. So it pays, it pays to be a thug now. now this, I'm, I'm I there's something very wrong. That's the point. So, so, there's value. Very wrong. so it's, yeah. it's back to the value. Yes. If we place more value on education on the output of educated people yes. and reward them accordingly, mm -hmm. then there will be an incentive. You know, this thing requires, you know, incentives. Then there'll be more incentive for, for you know, younger we people don't, we don't to pursue. We don't, wait, yeah. we don't want to wait for the hospitals to go drive doctors no, before we yeah, start yeah, shouting yeah, that, look, we, we need, need to encourage people when to our study medicine and remain and yeah, yeah, when our doctors and engineers that will deal with. So these are serious problems. Migration is good. That's what they're saying. They're not even saying that this whole place is messed up and we should turn yeah. Doctors should try yes. farming yes. and uh, opening. Yes. Uh, no, this is why I like uh, the advocacy. <laughs> Your statistics help us wake up to the reality that this is costing us by the day. Mm. Right. Advocacy is as much about owning up to responsibilities as it is about challenging failed authority. Chuka is not patting anyone on the back over a recent development by the name of the University of Transportation, Daura. <laughs>